Hello. Happy Sunday, everyone. <clears throat> Who's here? Shout out in the comments who you are, that you are watching, where you are. I'm always curious where people are. I think I know with a lot of you where you are, but not everyone, I'm sure. How was your week? Thornall is here. I knew you were here already because you left comment. Hello, John. I am doing pretty good. John's here. Jerome's here. Opening a beer. I've got myself a lovely glass of cognac. I'm not really a... Uh, also's here. Excellent. I'm not really a connoisseur of fancy drinking stuff. I know a bit about scotch. Um, I don't know much about cognac, but I, I tried out a few different ones and I found one that is not crazy expensive and pretty good called Brastad. It's also got a nice bottle. I'm, I'm superficial like that. Uh, I can be sold on a book by its cover, despite the saying, that's the way it is. What is everybody reading? How has your reading week been? How has your week otherwise been? Rogue's here. Rogue's always here. Yeah, most of you are always here, which is cool. Um, Caro's here. Thornall did not like Dune 2. I, I think I spoke about this on the pub uh, a number of weeks ago, right after I'd seen it. I wasn't... I didn't dislike it, but I didn't really love it either. Um, Dune Two was there. There are a lot of changes from the store from the book story, which I don't inherently mind, as long as they make sense and I can sort of follow why they're being done. And I thought that there were some there were some changes where I didn't really get it, why you would change that. But hello, Colton. Hello, Mitch. How did I end up feeling about Ashes of Man? Um, it was good. I, I still think I'm, I'm now, I'm, I'm now moved on to Disquiet Gods. Um, I, Ashes of Man, I thought was pretty good. But I still would probably put Demon in White as my number one in the series. Um, but it was good. It was good. I I think I think Kings Kingdoms of Death was the hardest one to read, um, just because of some of the unpleasant stuff going on in it. Uh, but yeah, hello Daniel. Hello, Brian. Why have you never been on screen in the Sunday pub, Brian? You can join anytime you like. You know where the link is, or you should anyway. And you're reading a book by John Douglas, and John Douglas is here. Cool. Reading The Rise and Reign of Mammals. Cool. That sounds interesting. Jerome, you're still on Black Company. Yeah, I, I, I really need to get back to Black Company. Um, it's, it's something I remember fondly. I mean, from 20 years ago, maybe. Um, and I think I, I think I OD'd on Black Company. I was just like binging back to back Black Company. And I got to the point where I, I don't know, maybe because it was quite bleak. Or it was just enough military fantasy for me. Um, I stopped. I don't remember exactly where I stopped. I think I got five or six novels in. Hello, Bex. Um, G'day, Navo. How are you? Awesome desert punk. <laughs> we have to have... I envision a future, 
not very far in the future, where every single book has its own subgenre. Um, I think I think that's the way that's the way winning. Mad Max vibes. That sounds good. Um, I am a big Mad Max fan. I especially as an Australian, you kind of have to be. Um, everybody's seen Fury Road, but like has everybody seen the first Mad Max movie, which was an extremely low budget Australian movie, which was very Australian it was back when Mel Gibson actually still had an Australian accent. Um, Ryan reading Kafka on the shore. I like Murakami, or at least I did a long time ago when I read a bunch of his novels. Um, I haven't read anything by Murakami in a quite a long time. Um, Halfway through Fool's Fate, Rogue. How is it? Um, yeah, I'm. I'm really curious to. Oh wait a sec. I always, because all of the titles are basically Assassin something or Fool something. I I get them mixed up. Fool's Fate is the third in the Tony Man trilogy. I'm trying to see him on my shelf, but it's blocked. I think it is. Assassin's Fate is the end of Realm of the Elder Links, but. Fool's Fate. Yeah, I finished that in January, I think. Uh, reread, which was uh, awesome. Um, very, very good. Aha, that explains it, Brian. I see. So you, what you're saying is you just don't want to be on screen with me. The uh, Friends on Books with Jimmy and Alan traumatized you. I understand. I understand. That's fine. I will try hard not to take it personally. Um, yes, Colton, Dead House Gates is very good. It's um, it's interesting to see how different people react to it um, because I know a number of people who've bounced off of Gardens of the Moon already and a number of people who found uh, Dead House Gates difficult. Um, not not difficult as in challenging to read necessarily, but I think difficult as in um, there are a lot of difficult things going on in it and there are some characters who can be difficult. Um, yeah. Mad Max is prescient to our modern world. I would beg to differ, John. I don't know. Um, we're, we're certainly not that far. <laughs> I mean, we're not trading things for petrol and bullets uh, quite yet. Um, we'll see. Might get there. Yeah, I, I, I tend to be a very staunchly a um, separate the art from the artist person. And I think Mel Gibson can be fun in some things, uh, especially Mad Max 1. He was extremely young, and this is before he got a um, reputation for being a bit of a um, uh, a Jew-hating asshole. Um, but yeah, that's been a while. Mad Max Two was great. Yeah, I. But did you see Mad Max One? Um, Mad Max One was was a, a big movie of my. I don't know, teenage years. I think I was a teenager when it came out and me and my friends watched the hell out of it. Um, Kings of the Death would have worked better if it was just the first half a bigger book as it was intended as a solo book had some issues. Uh, yeah, yeah. Although, th yeah, then if it had been two books, the second half of it would have been pretty heavy. And then having, it, it's weird. It's weird the way my mind at least works. If I have one book and a third of it is not so great, then I think it was overall a good book. But if that one book was exactly the same, but it was three books and one of them was not so great, I would think that book sucked. Anyway. Um, Nico's here. Hello, Nico. How you doing, mate? 
Yeah, trailers for Mad Max Furioso. It, 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 the thing, the thing with me, I, I love the Mad Max movies. Um, Fury Road was the first Mad Max movie that didn't have a story, and not not that all of them the stories are amazing or anything, but. Fury Road, literally, the story is let's drive from A to B and then drive back. I loved Fury Road. Don't get me wrong. Fury Road was awesome, but it wasn't because of the story. It wasn't really because of the acting, because there wasn't that much acting really either. It was because of the acrobatics and the scenery and the cinematography and the explosions. And it was just a big, fun, violent, explosive adventure. But it didn't have a story. And I'm I'm really curious if Furiosa is actually going to have a story or not. Um, or if it's just going to be, let's drive from B to C and drive back or something like that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, Furiosa, if it's going to be anything like Fury Road, I'm sure it'll be a hell of a lot of fun and exciting. Um, but otherwise, I'm like, you know, I mean, it's popcorn cinema, which is great. It's fine. I'm totally fine with that. Mad Max 1 is Aussie John Wick on the highway. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Shouldn't have killed his dog. Um, you are welcome always, Brian. Haven't read Ashes Man yet. Going to wait until May. Hey, Shad. Good to see you. Welcome. Yeah, Tina Turner. <laughs> Tina Turner. I don't know. I yeah, I, I Tina Turner in in uh Thunderdome and I, especially because she did the soundtrack and everything. I found all of that kind of cheesy and it just felt to me like they were cashing in on her brand recognition, so to speak. Um I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. In, in Dead House Gates, it's generally, Fellison is controversial. A lot of people see Fellison as a, an extremely needy, pushy, poisonous, like toxic character, um, which, I mean, you can't really argue with that. She is, but... She's also a really, really remarkably well done portrayal of trauma and what that can do to a person. Um, <clears throat> and the first time I read Dead House Gates, I hated her. I hated the chapters that she was in. I hated being around her at all. I wanted to get through those chapters as quick as possible. And the second time I had a lot more compassion for some reason. Um, and understood at least I didn't like her necessarily any more than I had the first time, but I realized that, yeah, you know, this, this actually makes sense. It totally makes sense. She's not just a horrible person. Um, she's, she's got reasons for being that horrible person. Shad is reading demon and white. Navo is getting the demon and white soon. Yeah. Demon and white. I, I mean, I've been reading them really, I haven't read basically, yeah, I haven't read basically anything but Sun Eater for the last four or five weeks, and I'm up to Disquiet Gods, um, which I'll be reading tonight. We will definitely do sprints um, shortly. There's nobody else on screen with me, so the, the conversation is basically one-sided. So maybe we'll do... Um, Spends quite soon. Uh, Jerome is also on Demon White. Yeah, as I've been going through, I mean, when you just finished a book, you're always like, oh my God, it, you just finished a good book. You're like, oh my God, that was great. But then with a little distance now, I I look back at Sun Eater and Demon and White was definitely the best. And Dregs of Empire, which is the... Novella, which comes directly after um, Ashes, excuse me, Ashes of Man, 
um, was the best novella. I read all the novellas as well. I haven't read all the short stories, but I read all the novellas. Hello, Vero. Vero's here. And Thornall still on Empire of Silence. That's okay. Take your time. Enjoy it. It's it's a good book. Although Empire of Silence, I mean, it's not really a criticism because I think it's totally normal in a series, especially a long series like Sun Eater, that the first book has a lot of heavy lifting to do. You gotta introduce the characters, you gotta introduce a whole complex world and all sorts of concepts and in this case, technology, and it's you have to do setup. And setup is almost never as interesting as once you've absorbed all of that setup and you are into the story. So Empire of Silence is not the best book of Sun Eater, but it's not a bad book by any means. Uh, I, I loved it. I chewed through it in three days, I think, two, three days. Um, but Demon and White, a lot of things come to a head in Demon and White. And it feels like the structure of Sun Eater could be sort of like this to Demon and White and then like this after Demon and White. You know, the, the Demon and White's kind of a turning point in a way. Um, did I get the feeling that reading a parallel universe Dune? Mm, yeah, a little bit. But the more you get into the detail, I mean, what what is certainly similar to Dune is there is a feudal-ish governmental structure um, with you know nobility and peasants basically um, organized into houses. Um, there is a galactic spanning a galaxy, a galaxy spanning. Um, empire, there are energy shields that people wear on their bodies and otherwise it doesn't feel much like Dune at all. And the more you get into it, it's actually a Roman structure, like ancient Rome. Um, yeah, Jerome, Jerome is right. Um, empire of silence maybe feels a bit, a bit Juni, um, and it becomes less and less Juni. Mentats too, yeah, but not, not really. I did not have the feeling that the uh, tours that they are Mentats exactly. Um, yeah, they, they, um, what are they called? I forget what they're called as well. In in general, what they're called. Um, scoliasts. Yeah. Thank you, Jerome. Um, the scoliasts, I had the feeling that they were more like extremely well-studied monks. It didn't, the, the, the whole idea of being a, a human computer, like making crazy fast calculations in your head and that kind of thing and predicting everything that's going to happen, um, which is what the Mentats are. The Scolias didn't feel like that at all. They just felt like extremely well-read people who've um, who've studied a lot and know a lot of things. Binge all seven books in Red Rising. Um, yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I, I feel being a very good friend of Tories, I feel obliged to read Red Rising. <laughs> Um, I think if I didn't read Red Rising eventually that she would be very upset with me or at least disappointed. So, and Rogue says Red Rising sucks. But yeah, Rogue has opinions. Everybody has opinions. I've heard from a lot of people that it's quite good. So, yeah. No, uh, Jerome, I, I'm not saying that they have nothing to do with Mentats. Um, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, there kind of was a Butlerian jihad in the the Solaran Empire uh, or the beginning of the Solaran Empire. Um, humanity rose up against their AI overlords, basically. Look who it is. It's Raph. 
Hello. How are you, Matt? Pretty good. How are you doing? That's, that's good to hear. Um, I will drink to that. Cheers. Cheers. I've only got cognac. Um, no, I don't. I don't think I have cognac. I've, I could. Raf, your camera just dropped out. And your audio. Well, we'll see. Raf will come back. About as cool as Mentats in the new movies. Yeah. They didn't. I understand why. Because, like, being, doing a movie, I imagine it's very hard to explain without a really, like, clumsy expo dump. Uh, it's really hard to explain what Mentats are. I'm going to disconnect Raf. Raf, if you can hear me, you are welcome to come back. I'm just kicking. Okay. He's reconnected again somehow anyway. Um, yeah, exactly. Apparently, Cognac crashed Raf. Um, okay. Rogue is mostly joking. But I, I assume at least that you did not like Red Rising Rogue, whether you think it absolutely sucks or not. Nico is drinking Japanese whiskey. Nico has some very good Japanese whiskey, which he shared with me recently. It's good stuff. Raf is I've back. Only had, I've only had Japanese whiskey once in a hotel room in Athens because okay. reasons. <laughs> Nika, Nika from the barrel is what Nika, Nico is drinking Nika. And I think Nika is what we had at the Kraken, and it was tasty. Or at least a Kraken, maybe not the last Kraken. I don't remember. How are you doing, Raf? You have been traveling. I have been traveling. I uh, went uh, to the wonderful uh, town of Bel. And he's gone again. <laughs> so Cognac crashed Raf, and um, I'm going to kick him again. Huh. He's having some sort of problems, either with his computer or his internet. I do not know. Um, yeah, no, they're they're like reading Sun Eater, there are a lot of very clear influences present and visible. Um but yeah, it it doesn't it doesn't stay that way. Um, it becomes, it feels much more of its own thing and, and less of a Dune homage as the series go on, goes on. And Raf is back. Yeah, um, I hope I've fixed it now. It's apparently, okay. um, yeah, my, my, my cable, because I, I use cable for my internet, got tangled in my desk chair. And um, as soon as I moved, I tore out the cable. Ah. Okay. Should be fixed now. Well, Colton, I would not want to disappoint you either. Tori wouldn't be the only person. Yeah. I I don't know. I Although I've heard a fair bit about it, I don't know. I don't really have any feeling for what I might think of Red Rising. I don't know. Raph's been hacked by angry Mormons. It's possible. Uh, I, I, I doubt it. Um, <laughs> their, presence likely, in, their presence around here is relatively limited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They um, they just come over here to missionarize, but they don't really they don't have anything like the the uh, yeah the spread and power that they have in America. And uh... and he's got again. <laughs> okay. Boom. Raph is... Maybe the angry Mormons hurt us, Jerome. Damn. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, when... Uh, when Sun Eater gets to the aliens, which is a big spoiler to say because it's mentioned early on, um, 
when it gets to the aliens and starts dealing with the aliens more, it becomes much more of its own thing. It becomes much more like there are no aliens in June. Are there though? Fourth time. Are there though? I mean, uh, depending on how you read stuff in the, the later um, Dune books, I would I would argue that at some point uh, humanity has changed so much that some of them are could be considered aliens compared to some others. Yeah, but I mean, we've got a word for that. They're transhumans, but they're not yeah. aliens like a, a, a species of sentient something that evolved somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, I mean, certainly, certainly Paul II becomes pretty alien, but... He's not. An I think alien. you mean. He's, I think you mean Leto the second. Uh, Leto the second. Yeah, yeah. Paul the second is. Paul's else. pretty alien himself, but not that much. Yeah, this is turning into a drinking game. Yeah, every time Raph disconnects, drink. Um, I hope it won't happen again. It's um all a bit touch and go. <laughs> I I live I live um in uh, in a place uh, where the um uh, the forces of entropy are incredibly strong at the moment. Okay. Yeah, it's um, my computer is slowly dying. My phone is slowly dying. Um, I don't have a camera to record videos again. It's uh, just yeah. everything's dying. Life is difficult. Daniel says it's a toss-up whether I would like it. The first book of Red Rising is very much like hung Hunger Games in space. Whereas Brian says he can't think of any reason I dislike it. So, yeah. No, it, I mean, from what I've heard and some smart people that I like a lot, like the series a lot and that's usually a good sign so we'll see um anyway you haven't read ah, and he's gone again i guess i'd better take a drink cheers nico ah. boom bye raf yeah um this is our nightly entertainment Sunday evening, watching Raph connect and disconnect. Um, yeah, no, I'm I'm interested. I mean, one thing I've heard, um, yes, Daniel, this is a, there is a good chance of that because Raph connects and disconnects every one minute. Um, it's funny; he's trying to connect now. It always says with Raph, device is not connected. Takes a little while, and then there he is. It's um, it's really weird. I have it is met. really weird. The gods are really me. The gods of internet connection hate you. Probably, apparently, <laughs> them and probably a bunch of others too. Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> I think I think gods in general, a lot of them are not not very friendly to True. humanity. Um. Yeah, Red Rising. The other thing I've heard about it is that it also has a ancient Roman-ish, space opera-ish kind of thing going on, which is sort of Sun Eater-ish. Or rather, I guess, Red Rising was first, so it's probably kind of Sun Eater is kind of Red Rising-ish. Anyway, they both have that sort of thing kind of going in them. Um but yeah, well, I'll, I'll get to it eventually. It's not very high on my list at the moment, I must say. I have a lot of things to read. Don't we all? I mean, I've yes. I've, I've, I've decided I will not try Red Rising. E. I'm like 99% sure I will hate it, and I don't want to read more than one. Um... Oops. Bye, Raf. Drink. Only the best fantasy novels is here. I do not know your name. Write your name, your real name in the in the chat. I'll try to um, be on a first name basis around here and call people their actual names if possible. Good to have you. I think this is your first time in the Sunday pub. And I saw that you joined the Fireside Discord yesterday, day before, something like that. Um, and you've got a new channel. I checked it out today. Looks good. Robin? Okay. Nice to meet you, Robin. Um, yeah. 
I'm I'm getting to the point. This this has been good. Reading Sun Eater has been good because, or not just reading Sun Eater has been good, but binging Sun Eater has been good because I I don't or for like I don't know five or six weeks I haven't had to think about what I'm going to read next because there was always another book and I just could keep going and I was in the mood for it and I really really got into it and this is the last book I mean not the last book in the series but the last book that's published there's one more book coming which hasn't been published yet and Raph is back yeah, I checked this time. Did not die. Uh, I assumed it was my browser, so I um, closed my browser and restarted my browser. Okay, I have heard you say that once before tonight that the problem was solved. We'll see. Look, I say that about all my problems all the time, <laughs> and I can tell you it's um... never true. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would not uh, go to myself if I were in need of like a clairvoyant. I can tell you. That. <laughs> Divination, I, not my strong suit. I don't know you that well, but I have also gotten the impression I would not go to you for, for a clairvoyance either. But, but most people I wouldn't, and I don't I don't think I'd probably ever go to a clairvoyant. My mother used to go to a... I don't know if the lady was meant to be a clairvoyant exactly, but yeah, I, I guess she was. My mother used to go to her once a year. Okay. Um, and she, she apparently quite clearly predicted a couple of things like yeah i yeah my when i when i lived in america and my mother was living in australia my mother really missed me and i was off doing university and and all that sort of stuff and this lady said to her one year next year your son will move to you and i did and okay. it was a very spontaneous decision on my part. It wasn't like my mother had hinted to her or something. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, no, that, that's the thing, Rogue. Apparently, her her statements were very specific or very, like, not open to a whole lot of interpretation. Um, okay. Maybe she was just good at guessing things. I don't know. But... I, I tend not to. I tend to be pretty skeptical about that sort of stuff. But I have met a couple of people, especially through Buddhism, who seem to have access to information that they couldn't have access to. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I mean, um, some people have really strong intuitions, in our, or I, I guess we, most of us do have that kind of intuitions, but most of us are not very good at listening to them. Yeah, yeah. My my Lama used to always say that he. He said that um, basically we're never, uh, on the one hand, we don't really accept the access to information that we have. Therefore, we yeah. don't. And we're not trained to do anything with it, to be yeah. aware of it. And he used to do stuff like you'd be sitting in a house with him and he'd say, could somebody start cooking dinner for six? You'd be like, uh, Lama, there's only four of us. And he's like, yeah, but in two hours uh, or in one hour, uh, two people are arriving. And like, and he hadn't been told that, like no one had called or, or anything yeah. like that. It just like he used to do little things like that all the time, which was weird, but common enough that I just got used to it eventually. It was like, it happens. <clears throat> yeah. I'm going so to... So what have you been reading, Matt, beyond I have just been a Sun reading, Eater? I, I've been reading nothing but Sun Eater for about five weeks. <laughs> I've read... Um, I'm now on the last... Not the last book of the series, but the last published book, Disquiet Gods. Which one is that? Ah, oh, Disquiet, Disquiet Gods. God. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The sixth one. It's apparently read the, coming out read... in audio very soon as well. Yeah, it it only just came out. I I pre-ordered it and I it it was shipped to me like 3 days ago, 4 days ago. Ah, um, okay. Yeah. Oh, now Brian's going to create a psychic persona. I look forward to seeing it. I expect you to have a turban and maybe a third eye. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. Sounds sounds reasonable. Yeah. 
That's what psychics look like, isn't it? Rogue is 100 definitely, pages definitely in the spear cut in sword. The, yeah, but what? <laughs> Rogue is 100 pages into the spear cuts through water. How are you finding it, Rogue? Are you enjoying it? Raph is gone again. Boom. Bye, Raph. Cheers, everyone. Mitch, I am not prepping you for a transition to new age books. I do not, I'm not into any new age kind of stuff. I am, I, I am very skeptical. And the things I was talking about, I was only talking about, and I tend to accept them because I experienced them personally. Um, but all of the crystals and dolphins bullshit, I'm, I'm super not into that. Don't, don't you worry. Jeroen joined instead of Raf. <laughs> Do we have to drink when you join? I don't know. Nico is out of booze. Yes, Rogue. Spear cuts through water is really weird. Uh, if by weird you mean it's it's not like most things I've ever read. It's, it just feels very different and interesting and original um, in a, yeah, it, it's got a, it's got a bit of a mythological feeling to it. Almost like it's, like it's a myth as a novel, um, but it's fantasy, but it's got also got a lot of historical feeling to it. It's not historical. It's not based on any kind of actual history, but it, it does feel historical-ish in a way. And it's very strangely written. So Raph is back. Now we've got Jerome as well. Hi, Raph. Hey. Hey, how are you, Jerome? Yeah, great. I think he just wanted to surprise us when you disappeared that the person reconnecting was not you. <laughs> I, I do approve of that uh, that approach. Yeah, and uh, Nico is getting a refill. On screen together. What's that? Yeah. Raph and I have never been on on screen together. That's true. That's true. But That's the true. last time I joined, just when you left. Yeah. That's right. He left because you were about to join. I think. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> I wouldn't want to hang out with me on stream either. It's. Um... <laughs> Somehow I do it almost every week. So I was about to suggest that we do a sprint. Now that sounds like a really good idea. Uh, for how long would you like to sprint? I have a book to finish. Um, let's <laughs> But say... I'm not going to tell you the title because everyone will be, well, not surprised. <laughs> no, I, I don't think I've ever heard you tell me anything that you were reading that I was surprised by. Um. Like a court of thorns not and roses would I've... surprise me, but see, that's that's kind of the thing. There's, there's very few books I would not, in theory, if I had a reason, not touch and read. Like, like I read, you know, sure. I read, um, Hunchback of Notre Dame last week, and no, I don't like it. It's a shit book, but um, <laughs> it's also a book where I feel having read it gives me the right to call it a shit book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been I've been trying to be more mindful of that lately myself and not have too strong an opinion of anything I haven't read. Um, because what do I know? You know, and I know books that other people hate that I loved. So, um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, let's read until 10 past. Sound All right. Good? Let's see if I get kicked out while reading. <laughs> Mute yourselves and enjoy your reads, everybody. See you soon. Look at this.
Hello. Reading people. How is your read? Or your listen? Well, it seems I didn't get kicked out again. I'm shocked. Yeah, no, you, you seem to be stable finally. Um, yeah. Or I at least your to, connection is. I, I wish I knew what it was. Um, no I idea. No <clears throat> idea. Yeah, I think it's just my computer being very old and... Uh, That'll do it. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those things. Like, like all my all my tech equipment is like four or five years old by now, and you know. <laughs> Hi, Joe. <laughs> Joe Byrne has joined yeah, us. Yeah, very good. Good to see you, Joe. Yeah, I, I I was somehow very distracted the whole time I was reading. I was thinking about. I binged this week. The Fallout series, the first season. Okay. Over a few nights. Okay. Um, and I don't remember. You told me this once before. I don't remember when your blindness really started kicking in. Yeah. Did Did you ever play a Fallout game? I did play some of the really old um, uh, RPG games, like the first one or two Fallouts, but never one right. of the... Um, 3D ones that came right out. first person. Yeah. Uh, we have a guest, <laughs> Mr. Cleo. You can't see this, Raf, but it is Brian Bell mm. wearing a gold turban holding up tarot cards. Call me now, I will give you your tarot card reading. Okay, we've we've just Thank we've just seen the, the invention. <laughs> We've just seen the invention of a new Bell persona. Oh, yeah. As if, we tell uh, the fortune. We tell the love. The loss. <laughs> On me now. <laughs> I can't wait for your video, Brian. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. You, you saw you saw it, you saw Mr. Cleo here first on the Sunday pub, everyone. Yeah. Um, um, Madame Blavatsky, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. We're all part of booktube history. <laughs> Brian's over the top persona, as if he needed another one. <laughs> do you need to know about your career? Do you need to know about your romance? What do you need to know? Mr. Cleo will tell you. Please tell me about my career because I know there is nothing to say about romance in my life. I am seeing a blank wall, but it is starting to look greener, like a little shrub growing into tree. Okay. That's that's good to know. That clears everything up for me. That's what um, I do. Call me now. Rabin wants uh, lottery numbers, please. None of these vague nine. bullshit answers. Lottery numbers. Nine and nine. Three nines. Three nines. Okay. That Three there nine. is a, there's a fascinating. There's a fascinating recording Maybe. of Fritz Lieber reading a Clark Ashton Smith story, that being the sorcerer. And he uh, there's that the, <clears throat> there's a uh, <clears throat> protection ritual spell in there somewhere and. Fritz Lieber saying nine, nine, nine sounds incredibly scary. <laughs> I don't know if it's on YouTube. I've, I've heard it years ago and then, then got sampled by like a 70s uh, retro rock kind of occult band uh, for a song about the same short story. Cleo, um, Joe says your, your cards are upside down. The cards are how they need to be. Okay, there you go, Joe. Um Thornall wants to know, what is the purpose of meaning? Thornall, I will tell you the purpose of meaning. First, send me $20 US. You can just, you can just put your PayPal email address in, uh, in the chat, and I'm sure you'll get a lot of money. Matt, Mr. Fantasy Book Reviews. My mom told me my dad went to the grocery store when I was seven. He hasn't come home back. Uh, come home yet. When will he be back? We need to consult the cards on this one. Make sure you PayPal the fee across, Matt. 
Oh, it's a good one. It's the nine. It's the six of pentacle. Uh huh. And. Oh, when will they be back? Oh, they're not coming back. Uh -huh. so you got the six of pentacle. Very good card for okay. mom and dad. They're doing great. It was the best decision they ever made. Okay. So <laughs> you'll never see your dad again, Matt, but he's doing well. I guess that's something. Brian and his Ottoman the cards, period. No, call me now. <laughs> uh yeah, I guess I guess I should uh, not go back and reread that Edward Said book I read recently. <laughs> what what was that? I have no well, idea what you're was, talking about. Um, uh, well, the, the book called Orientalism. Oh right, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Brian, Brian, as Brian is well, no, he was back, but he, uh, yeah, you saw it here first, ladies and gentlemen, the first internet appearance of Mr. Cleo, um, coming yeah. no doubt to a build tube near you soon. Yeah. So is the, is how the can you not see the link on a, a blind man saw the link on my discord? How can you not find the link on my Discord? It's where it always is. Go into my channel, Matt on Books, then go into the thread, Sunday Pub. Yeah, apparently Britain found it. Hi, Britain. Hooray. Um, yeah, um, so you didn't actually read, but uh, we're thinking about the Fallout series. Uh, during the last I, I, did, I did read. I was just a bit distracted. <laughs> you had the date wrong is why I got confused for before you go on your tangent. Oh, yeah, no, no, you're right. I didn't change the date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I changed the links, but I didn't change the date. Ah. So I apologize for implying that you're an idiot. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> uh, I often uh, mock myself for being an idiot. It's okay. I am an idiot. I but, guess um, most of us are sometimes. But Indeed. Fallout show. And some of us most times. <laughs> Joe Byrne in the house. Hooray. Uh, wow, hey, Joe Byrne has appeared. We, we have a video coming out on, on Wednesday. Yes, we do. Well, nice. Which which topic? Oh, you know, is his his novel, Blissful oh. Ascending. My, my, it... someone, you might have heard of it, you know. Full... I, I, yeah, yeah, I, I think I did. Yeah. I did a full, uh, a full, full spoiler deep dive into what I meant by all the craziness. So, I uh, thought your novel was called Spaceship Punching. Spaceship Man Punching Spaceships. Man, that, man genre, punches spaceship. Yeah. Okay. Not the not the title. But, See, uh, it did, you you probably weren't here right at the beginning of the stream, but I said we're moving towards a day and age when every book will have its own subgenre. Yes. Yes. And your series yes. has yes. its own subgenre already. I, You're a trendsetter. I, I have two. My the Grim Dwarf is a Knuckles and Necromancy, which is my own subgenre that I created. Knuckles and necromancy. I, I like. I, that. I, I get. The, I get the. I get the impression that you, Joe, really like to write stories about uh, people that punch other stuff. I, I really do. It's 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 a, it's a, it's a weakness. I just realized, like, of all my main characters, like, I just wrote a story where he actually uses a knife for the first time, where the MC uses like any kind of tool. <laughs> that's that's your larger subgenre, is punching. Punching. Yeah. And then yeah. you've got your. Knuckles and necromancy and, and yeah. man punching spaceship, man, man punching, man punching spaceship. spaceship, dwarf yeah. punching liches, um, as it should be. Yeah, yeah. welcome, Brian. I rest Hello, did Your I miss anything? First time ever on the pub. Did I miss Brian, someone else with you? Sounds just like you. What's that? Someone else was just on that sounds just like you. Oh, must have been dashingly handsome. Yeah, Look, looks looks a lot like you with a gold pillow on your head yeah, too. With a hat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to check the replay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Excellent. <sighs> good to see you, Brian. How you doing? I'm doing good. I am reading way slower for the last week than usual. Um, Why? But I have to say, it's kind of like been par for the course, actually. So maybe it's not usual. It could be my new normal. But I've been reading really dense stuff. Um, so now I'm on John's book, which is a little bit faster reading. So I'm hoping I can knock that one out in the next few days. 
But I didn't even realize even John's book 600 and some pages. Which people, John? People have forgotten uh, John, John, John Douglas, who is in the oh. chat. Oh. Um, or was earlier anyway. Ooh. Um, are, are we reading? Um, are we reading? Black Cloud. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I read a bit of it, but. Um, Hi, Ron. Yeah, I won't. Um, I won't say much. <laughs> <clears throat> Look, it, it's it's all not as um, fun and easy reading as what I'm currently reading. I can tell you that. Right, right. Now, you're, now you're going to tell us you're reading some bizarre, obscure bullshit. I'm reading 17 Contradictions and the End of Capitalism by David Harvey. Yep, like I said. <laughs> I, I don't think David Harvey is what you this might is, call obscure. This is almost exactly like that, except for with orcs. <laughs> yeah, almost that exactly like that, but with... A, oh, that's right. That's right. I remember John's... Uh, I kind of know John from online, and I remember the cover of his book, which has a mm -hmm. conspicuously green character. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. He likes orcs. If exactly, I remember and he's right. very into orcs. Yeah, he also, mentions a suspiciously orcs green character could also be a guy experiencing heavy seasickness or food poisoning. <laughs> no, like really green. Really, and I think he also has little little tusks or something. He does. I don't, I don't know. I, I haven't I seen him. That cover person. artist. That's a ah, okay. Lines. He did. Um, he did partial function, and he did my upcoming the Grim Dwarf. The I just got the cover, so cool. it's coming out in a few, cool. a few months. So a very nice dude, Jay Caleb. Um, awesome. Well, this yeah, is actually, I see Joe twice in a week. Actually, Brian, <laughs> uh, Brian, the um, the book I immediately thought of when you said it's like what Raph's reading, but with orcs, was yeah. Orconomics. Um, <laughs> but I thought John didn't John didn't write Orconomics. No, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, and no, I, I needed a break from uh, from all that um, the reactionary romanticism in uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame. So I thought like a capital centric um, analysis of the 2007 2008 mortgage crisis might be exactly what I need. That um, is a sentence I have never said, nor will I ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like beyond anything else, it's it's a very very good book if you're interested in like you know why economies collapse. Yeah, exactly. I like. <laughs> It it does not sound like a book I will ever need. Um, is there punching? Me being me. Are there, are there spaceships? Is there punching or orcs? orcs? <laughs> or orcs? I, I think we. Um, since I'm almost done, I think we're coming to the punching part. Yes. <laughs> okay. There's punching at the climax. He, oh. he certainly worked up enough anger to punch someone. They save the point. action sequences till the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The big yes. finale. Has yeah, yeah. Has anyone? I mean, other than Raph. Been watching uh, Fallout? I yes. have. I saw the first two episodes. They're actually pretty good. I'm liking it. I'm on episode six. Derry! Hi, Derry! Woohoo! A wild Derry has appeared. How are you, Derry? Yeah, man. Oh. I am awake. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's early for yeah, you, isn't it? Like 7 it, 8 a.m.? Yeah, it's just it's 20 past 7 in the morning. So. Goodness. So, but I have to be up because my friend's away and the cat expects to be fed at breakfast time. So <laughs> I have to get up and feed the cat. I've got a I've got a new favorite game. It's not my favorite game, it's Fitz's favorite game. Yeah. Which is um kicking Fitz out of the bed and Fitz jumps back in and paws at me. Like over and over and over. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. She's like, you, you can't ignore her. And we do, she's we do this every morning for yeah. either I get sick of it and I get up or we do it for about half an hour or 45 minutes where I'm half asleep and, and kicking her, literally kicking her out of the bed. Yeah. And eventually she'll give up and she comes uh -huh. over and just sort of falls over on my back and just oh. falls asleep for a while. And I get to sleep for another hour, maybe. Well, that's a good um, game. Yeah, you never no, know the outcome. <laughs> exactly. It's different every day. Oh, poor old Mark Scott. He was shut out last night. It was too cold for me to leave the door open for him. So he was literally leaning against the door when I opened the door for him this morning. And I was like, are you cold, Floof? <laughs> I can't shut the door. I can, like Fitz, Fitz has gotten to the point now where like last, last night was the first night that she's ever done this where mm -hmm. I've got my like, end of the evening routine, 
you know, I go around, turn all the lights off and whatever. And, and I was doing that and she disappeared and I oh. went around the corner and she was <coughs> sitting right in front of my bedroom door, which I keep oh. closed, closed during the day. <laughs> well, clearly and she was like, it, we're, we're going to bed, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my dog used to do the same kind of thing, like um, when I still had a dog. And it's like, I had to, like that one time I had to finish like a paper for university. So I had to, because of course, you know, humanity students um, or students in general, really, you know, using the deadline to the to the absolute maximum. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to kind of finish writing that, that thing until like 4 a.m. or whatever. And like, at some point, like dog was sleeping next to me. And at some point she just got up and just laid her head on my knee like, as I'm sitting at my desk. Oh, and that head oh. got heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier. <laughs> and I'm like, dog, I, I get it. I don't want to sit here. Either, yeah. <laughs> it's so, it, there's so many people I know with dogs who have that, where the dog's like, come on, it's bedtime. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, I met, I met a really nice cat, um, or also like very fat cat, uh, when I was in, uh, visiting friends in Sofia in Bulgaria. They have a cat, and uh, um, the cat has a very specific name, and I think probably Matt's going to be the only one who understands why these are exactly my kind of for people, because uh, the cat is named a Claus Sturtebaker, uh, but Claus is spelled with a W. Oh, I like it. And, Hi, uh, yeah. Joanna. It's Actually, I like, thought of um, Alan's cat, Claudius. It's with a with a W. I thought of you nice. um, last night, Derry, because oh. on the Discord, you and somebody else were talking about Dark, the series. Oh yes, yes, yeah. great TV and, show. And I remembered that I had watched the first season when it was new. Yeah, and maybe a few episodes of the second season, but I never continued because. Oh my goodness. It's oh. so weird and complicated that if you go into the second season with a year break, or at oh, least yeah. my, my brain, I was like, I have no idea I'm what the fuck is back. going on anymore. <laughs> so I started I watching it, it over like a week and a half. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's my plan. I've, I've yeah. watched like four episodes last night and I it's noticed something and I thought, mm -hmm. I thought this is this would be interesting because for a German or somebody who's lived in Germany long enough, it's a German show, right? Mm. Yeah. And there's a there's a hint in it, which is absolutely obvious what's going on to a German and probably not to anyone else. Ooh, do when, tell. When they go through the forest in the first season, there are bits where, like a couple of different times, different people find a candy bar wrapper yes and it says raider yes right but it looks like a twix wrapper yes. and that's what i assumed it would be the the, the... no it got changed no, the, the, name, the, the thing the is in 1991 until 1991 twix in germany was raider right ah, right and okay. in 1991 they changed the name to twix so them finding that candy bar wrapper is a clear hint about 1986. Right. Okay. Right. Because yeah. like in modern Germany, you would never you find a radar wrapper. Yeah. I, I, I remember, I re still remember that like advertisement campaign when they talked about, like used the whole, like, um, okay. Jerry was like, Rider heißt jetzt Twix, sonst ändert sich nix. <laughs> Which means like Rider is now named Twix, uh, but nothing else will change, but it rhymes in German. They made like a huge <laughs> campaign back in the day. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, it's, it's very much something that you only understand if you are, I guess, maybe Austrian or uh, Swiss as well. I don't know if those yeah. two were wow. Austrian. Wow. It's like I the, it. like, so like the three finger in thing show. in Inglorious Bastards. Yeah. Which we talked about in the pub before. <laughs> like, there's a scene in Inglorious Bastards where Brad Pitt and his buddies are impersonating. Nazis. Yep. And they're in the in the beer, beer keller. Yeah, yeah, they're they're in the place. They're drinking beer, and he says three more. That's what pulled the guy in. And, well, exactly. And I, as a a foreigner living in Germany, I saw that and I was like, "Oh shit, you just fucked up big time, dude." <laughs> um, because Germans, that's three. Yeah. That's what gives them away. Yeah. Well. Exactly. Like. They're Which I didn't suspicious. actually, I didn't actually get that till you explained that last week. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it was oh, last shit, week. I just got right. that. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
but I think, like, beyond anything else, that's that's a really cool way of uh, of doing that for, for an American film. Someone really did their research on German uh, counting tactics. Absolutely. Because it is those little things that would give somebody away. Yeah. You know, just right. literally right. cultural right. norms. Right. Using your, putting your fork in your right hand and your knife and then swapping them like Americans do and then swapping them back. Yeah. That is, that is so bizarre. Yeah. Even I as an American that. kid... My grandmother was always hassling me and trying to make me do that. And I was like, why? Yeah. I do not understand why that is considered proper etiquette. Because I, I was back and forth between America and Australia. And in Australia, like, fork, back of your fork into your mouth, you know. Um, but Americans cut and then switch and then right hand with the fork. And it's like, it's That's so very weird. strange. It's so weird. <laughs> it's what we do. What can I say? We're built different out here in America. Yeah, the strange thing. Yeah. Ron. <laughs> I usually just go, America. Okay. <laughs> you guys are all crazy. <laughs> Ron, I'm I'm probably jumping to conclusions. Are you deaf? Is that why you or, would be using American Sign Language or you just know American Sign Language? Which I'm, is I'm really curious. cool if you do. Yeah. I used to know sign language. My my girlfriend in high school worked with deaf kids and taught me sign language so that we could flirt in class without the teacher knowing. <laughs> you dirty dog, you've done it. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, that's some dedication. The need to flirt with women is why men learn 90% of the things we know. That's why you I learned German. I'm going to give you that. <laughs> Driving force education. Got to learn to hunt so I can feed the girl back in the tent so she'll put yeah, man, and I've got to be better at it than that other guy. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Home, is that, is that exactly. why you decided to try martial arts, Joe? Mm. Okay, so apparently, according to Osa, the the um, uh, Raider Twix thing also happened in Sweden. So yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so it might might have been a really decent chunk of people overall who Europe. will notice that particular little. But not if you're not if you're like a, an American audience, I guess. No, I mean, I yeah, which which, which is probably the vast majority of I people who've it. actually watched it because the the market is so huge yeah. in in America. Such a good show, guys! But if you haven't seen it, it is very good. Which one really good. Fuck, I've seen it's like two story. episodes because a former girlfriend of mine was very much into it, and I am, um, I don't know, I'm not a television person in general, I, but never never was even like back when I you know could see more it just no. never really appealed appealed to me it was oddly intricate it's for a it's, german it's show i think it's crazy intricate and it's amazing so that it's clever. done so well like a mm. german show that has been like one of the most watched things on netflix a while ago um is pretty rare like yes. german shows don't get out much so to speak well, to be fair, most shows that you need to read subtitles for don't do particularly well but it, yeah, although it it's, sort of it's that and goes, it's good enough. Netflix it's is also different. Netflix does a pretty good job of syncing things. Yes. Yeah, like I'm actually, it's funny. I actually started watching it again. I think the first time I watched it in German, I started watching it this time in German. Yeah, and then I put on subtitles because the German audio of the dialogue was, I I think badly mixed, so it was hard to catch everything. Mm. And then I switched it to um, English. And the audio is much better. Oh, so I've actually been I've watching it. I've it been done. watching it synchronized in, in in English. Yeah. Is that is that maybe be, like the same way you have some sometimes like really hard to hear like dialogue in American movies? But the I think it's like the dubbing thing that like if they don't do like a redubbing or anything and just like have people in like an open space talk, then sometimes the recording is just not very good. And dubbing you don't have that because obviously someone sits in like a soundproof room and just um, yes, yeah. voice acting. I think that's. Yeah, I mean, if you're in a perfect recording booth, it's much better than a boom mic held up over yeah. the people. But I just, I, I think, I think the the mix was actually pretty bad on Dark. There were a lot of atmospheric sounds and stuff that were too loud, or the voices were too yeah. muffled, or whatever. Although I, I've definitely watched American movies where like the <laughs> the sound was also really bad, and like dialogue was really hard to oh, yeah. just hear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I watch nearly everything with subtitles now. That way, if I've missed it, there's a pretty good chance I'm a fast enough reader to catch it in the subtitle. See, I've been, I, I never use subtitles. 
I'm surprised. I'm shocked. <laughs> yeah. I've been watching Shogun as well, and Shogun is surprisingly... I'm really surprised by this. It's an American-produced show where, like, 80-90% of the whole show is in subtitles because it's all Japanese. Oh, I like that. Awesome. I'm and loving Shogun. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. It's really good. Because I like haven't read the, it, and I'm kind of waiting for it to finish coming out so I can watch it all in one go because everyone's raving. Currently, I haven't read the book. or I started the book, and I, I didn't DNF it, but I I maybe latered it. Um and the show, from what I've heard, actually, I had a really weird experience. I was out of town. I was at a party, and I was sitting next to a guy, and he turned and said to me, hey, have you been watching Shogun? And I was like, oh, my God, yeah, it's so amazing. It's so good. It's a oh man. And he was like, really? Oh. I was like, dude, are you going to be the first person that I've okay. bumped into ever <laughs> anywhere? And I've been talking to a lot of people about this show. The first person who doesn't like it. And he he's a huge book fan. He read it five oh, or six okay. times. And he said that they're skipping things and changing things in ways that annoy him. I don't know. Hey, I don't know. All, we've all been there. <laughs> I've, sure. I've, read the, I've read the book in February. So, I mean, I'm, I'm coming at it with a real recent read. It's yep. pretty faithful. I don't I don't know what that guy's talking about. I mean, they do some things to make it a little bit more dramatic, you know, for the American audience that's looking yep. for kind of a reason behind every action and minutia of the show. But thematically, it's right on the money. And yeah, I mean, I guess they kind of it's it's a 1300 page book they, they, and they're doing it, you know, in one season only. They've got to cut you know, some things, but yeah. nothing substantial. And the tone you know, of the of the show is shot exactly like the book read to me. So, See, yeah, I, have I, I think if you were going to be, you know, I don't know if I'll ever read the book. I think this miniseries is definitely an adequate uh, substitution. Uh, where you you're not going to miss anything of importance, I don't think. It was it was to be. It, it, it's important to note the party I was at was a nerd party, and us nerds we can be super pedantic about our thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. And I think I think Shogun is maybe his thing. And I I just looked at him and I was like, "Did you like Dune 2? And he was like, "Yeah, it was amazing." And I was like, "Fuck off." <laughs> But because see, that's, I'm, that's exactly I'm, the that's point. Cool. <laughs> I'm a I'm a Dune nerd, so um, I, I I don't think Dune two was bad. I just walked out of it thinking, yeah, that was yeah, there. okay. There were so, some yeah. scenes that were amazing, but I think the only thing that I might have like. had a, had a complaint with is just the fact that it is only a mini series and they only have so many minutes to film. Um, it, had this been like a two season or a three season deal. I'm pretty positive the guy would have been happy because they, they, they would have built out a lot yeah, more. I don't think, and, they, you know, they, I don't think yeah. they've really chunked out anything that was of major significance, certainly not to the plot. Um, maybe, you know, like I said, maybe minutia that only somebody's yeah. read the book five or six times is and ever. And then it becomes a, a cost benefit ratio where it's like, well, we right. pay for two seasons, um, but what are we gaining? We're not gaining a whole nother season's budget worth of story out of it. So, yeah, so yeah, but I mean, I mean that's that's, that's that's kind of the thing. Is like I got annoyed with Dune. I would probably not get annoyed. Well, I, I would never watch Shogun. I would never read the book because I'm just not interested in anything Japan. I might be the one person in the Western Hemisphere that is not crazy about anything Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't interest me at all. Well, you're not a you're not a weeaboo. I, I hear you. Uh, not even just that. It's like I, I tried reading some Japanese novels. Or it, it just I don't know. It, I, I like the cultural context, and at this point, I just don't think it's worth my time to actually build up that cultural context so I can enjoy it. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> there, there's, there's other cultures I'm more interested in at this point. So, and there's Matt, certainly enough stuff out there. <laughs> that so, being said, I did love uh, The Memory Police when I read it last year. So, so Matt, out of five Akira Kurosawa's, like, how good is, is, um, how good is Shogun? Like, yeah, it, I mean it's it. I mean, other than Kurosawa himself, I'd say it's the best Japanese anything I've seen on television. Good. So five Kurosawa's out of five Kurosawa. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, it's pretty it's pretty damn good. I mean, I'm I I I wouldn't say I'm super knowledgeable about Japan shit, but I've been a samurai medieval Japan kind of fan and uh whatever since I was a teenager. And it's like that's one thing, like whatever you think of the story and the acting, the writing and everything else, it looks amazing. It's just stunning. Um, the the armor and the architecture and the scenery and like mm. the costumes, it's just like everything's super gorgeous. Um, and the acting and writing and story are also really, really good. Um, and it's very dramatic. I think I think maybe that's why it's only one season because I haven't read all of Shogun. But from what I read, a lot of it develops quite slowly. And there's a lot of interior stuff and mm -hmm. background intriguey things that take a really long time to become clear. And, you know, and I think they've just sort of taken everything they can that's exciting and not slow and takes a long time yeah. to develop. Yeah. I mean, like they've taken like this a, works better in TV. Say like a 20 or 30 page conversation between the Catholics, right? Might yeah. be a 10 second conversation on, right. on screen. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's why the book's 1300 pages, but why they're effectively getting the whole story out in, you know, eight to 10 episodes, whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Did you say you were watching fallout? I watched I it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I binged it. I watched a few episodes every night and went through the whole thing and it's funny i've never played a fallout game oh wow i have and not either th this not is even like, the really old ones none of them i never somehow i totally missed fallout they're awesome uh I, well the funny the funny thing is it, i'm having the reverse experience i watched the series yeah, and I, I felt like watching the series i was like i've been exposed to enough fallout stuff it's kind of like mainstream cultural yeah. knowledge you know and images and whatever and i just had the feeling throughout the series that i was constantly missing easter eggs that i would yeah. really enjoy had i played the game so i started playing fallout 4 yesterday cool yeah and it's good i'm enjoying it yeah okay. it's it's they they do capturing the tone is exactly what they do this the show is set on the west coast which none of any of the Fallout games really are. The closest is is the one set in Las Vegas, um, but yeah. this is all you know happening in California. So they're really not out of canon too much with anything from the games because that's all you know Washington D.C. Or, yeah, uh, that's uh, although in the early games, it. yeah, I think I think it was Fallout One and Two, the New California Republic. Yeah, is in those mm -hmm. games. So. Yeah. There's a there's a connection certainly. There's a connection. There, yeah. New California it's... Republic is in uh, Fallout New Vegas as well. Yeah, but the That's but my the, favorite the, of the games. Yeah, I mean, but like, it doesn't really cross anything, and the tone is just dead on the money. I mean, they yeah. hit it, they hit it out of the park. Um, and I think that the showrunner is a huge game fan. I mean, I think that's like the important part is that. Um, compared to a lot of other games like fallout has always had a very very specific tone like mm. uh, and it's like one of the reasons why i think um, the uh, the 3d games like the later ones um the fallout 3 and so forth were so successful is that they managed to um transfer to a, it's basically an adaptation already it's like to transfer the tone of those um isometric top down uh computer like role playing games into that other very different genre within video games. They managed to to capture that tone. It's like whatever you do in you any like other bit. adaptation, yeah. you need to have that sense of humor, that weird, that, that, that sort of like weird sense of humor of um, stuff going on there. You need to have that. And if, if, if you hit that, then you're basically home and dry. You just don't need anything else is like a bonus, but you need to capture that specific tone. Which is, yeah. which is why like, for example, an opposite of that is The Witcher. So forget forget the novels of The Witcher. Yeah, it's like very like the, different feel. The, the Witcher Wild Hunt, you know, Witcher 3 video game versus the Netflix show. They feel nothing like each other at all. And, yeah. I, and that's an interesting one because mm. that's they like feel different. Ones. I wouldn't say they feel completely unconnected. I mean, <laughs> but 
there, there, there definitely is a different feeling. Yeah. 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 I find, I find Witcher super fascinating in that it's like probably the first time where um, the uh, the international video game release is basically why anyone learns about learned about the novels. Usually, it's more like you have like a game yeah. and yeah. you have like a novelization or an adaptation in any other form. But this is probably the first time where um, the medium of video games did actually make a fairly niche novel um, outside of like Eastern Europe, fairly niche um, novel into like something that people cared about. Like, I think yeah. the books are trash, but <laughs> or not not very good. Is put it mildly i think the short stories are good the novels i didn't i didn't like the novels. novels that much either i only tried to read one of them and i, I think the, the short stories are like, fun the i like the short stories quite a lot yes. yeah yeah the novels not so much and i just really don't care yeah. about siri she just annoys me and i'm like why am, why am i supposed to care about this girl i just <laughs> he's a really good short story writer and if you read the novels as he takes a couple short stories and tries to stitch them together into a book it doesn't sort of really work that. but as novels they don't work yeah, and the the, the 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 tries is the problem because it feels like that. And attempt, right. you know, it it feels like he's he's sewing together a bunch what of I, what things I, what that I find don't really belong is, together. Because I have like a you know I have a lot of friends from um, a lot of parts of like Central and Eastern Europe, and a lot of these people really love the Witcher novels. And like I was like yeah. a former girlfriend <laughs> of mine is is Polish and she loved the Witcher novels. And there's something in there that very much speaks and reflects like a certain feeling that a lot of people growing up in, you know, that shared like a memory of growing up in like a Soviet or like a socialist or post-socialist society that, that get captured by these novels in a way. And I think yeah. a lot of like us living in like those of us who, you know, have not grown up um, in that in that specific atmosphere, we just lack that specific context that could possibly make us a lot of this stuff like speak more to us. And then yeah. it just feels like another generic fantasy novel, basically. I have I have a lot of Polish friends mm -hmm. and uh, we actually talked about this once. Mm -hmm. And the the funny thing was like most of the Western world didn't know about the novels until the third game came out. Yeah. You know, everybody yeah. played Witcher 3. And then a bunch of people were like, oh, these are based on books. You know, they, they yeah. didn't know. They just thought it was a really good video game. My Polish friends had all read the books, even yeah. ones that aren't big fantasy heads, and they hated the game. Yeah. Or not hated wow. the game. The game experience was good, but they, they were pissed off at the game because it changed so many things from the books. They had a feeling that, that, that Geralt in the game wasn't Geralt from the books. You know, so to them, the game was an adaptation that wasn't the way it should have been. Genuine. It also, it it also probably pissed off all the Elric fans who, who wanted a video game. It probably, yeah. <laughs> I think it, it pissed it, off Michael Moorcock. Well, <laughs> he's probably he's, no one he's legendarily like, easy dude. to piss off, though. Yeah. He doesn't no. have that uh, reputation. He seems like he, such he a nice publicly dude, on Facebook but he's so about cantankerous everything. in his writing sometimes. It's he's like, he's yeah. a grumpy old bastard. Yeah. He's, he's a and really that's not a negative thing. Some of the most fabulous people are grumpy sure. old bastards. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, think that, like, like <laughs> I think it's like, like I, well, well, I'll put, like, said in the chat, like, uh, I don't think it's necessarily lost in translation on like a linguistic level. I think it's very much like a cultural context that lost in translation because I've, you know, I, I have uh, both um, read parts of the German translation and the English translation. The problem is very much the cultural context, not so much the individual choices of words there. It's very much more like a... They, they very, seem to be a very Eastern European thing somehow. There's something about them that... It's a vibe. Totally clicks with Eastern <laughs> Europeans. Yeah. I like Nightwatch. Anyone remember Nightwatch? Nightwatch. It's, it's very Russian. Yeah. 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 It feels very Russian. Yeah. 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 It's totally Russian. Yeah. I, I have to agree with you, Brian, though. They really nailed the, the feel of Fallout. Totally. Mm -hmm. Totally. It's, I'm, I'm kind of getting it backwards. Like, like I said, I hadn't played the games before. But play New Vegas at Fall least. The game Fallout, a masterpiece. Well, I'm playing I'm playing Fallout 4 because it just went on to uh Xbox Game Pass. Mm -hmm. So it's free. Um <laughs> for me, if you have a subscription, I, I have a, a Game Pass so it's subscription. Free. 
Well, it like <laughs> I I pay twelve bucks a month and I can install like two hundred and fifty different games and nice. it rotates and some games like Starfield are Game Pass first day like they launched on Game Pass so considering I might play two different games in a month and some of them might cost sixty to eighty bucks yeah that's it's not a bad twelve way bucks to go. a month is is not yeah. bad yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you'll be able to definitely just, depending on how you play, you know, open world video games, if you so choose, you could wander around like an asshole for dozens of hours, you know, <laughs> in the wasteland and just run into a million different things. Wondering, Whether, wondering like an asshole is one of my favorite things to do in, in any video game. Like, yeah, I I'll love use that today. Game. Then you're going to love I have to that. go on a mission. Uh, today yeah. I have to go on a mission. I built myself a, a rag. Uh, rug loom over the weekend because I I did but I need steel rods so I have to go on a mission and find steel rods for the sides of my loom so that my rugs don't go all skew up. so I'm going to use this I'm going to walk around like an asshole today Excellent. on my mission and Excellent. hopefully I shall achieve the objective Excellent. <laughs> I, I, I never played the Fallout games See, I like the last the last of the those like those style of games I played was Morrowind and I remember like having reached insane levels before I even reached fucking Balmora to talk right. to the guy. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh, this big quest that you're meant to give me. That's meant to be super challenging. I'm like 20 levels past that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah I'm, no, I'm, 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 I'm exactly like enough, that. But my, I didn't my... pack enough weapons. got got attacked by fucking cliff races and my ax broke and I just couldn't do anything. And I just hated it so much. I don't know. See what a go. glorious game back in See the day, man. Thanks. See you, Joe. I, I, I'm yeah. oh. Actually, I got a boogie myself, but I'm going to actually just be reading. So I will still be in the pub, but I'm going to be reading side. We're going we're gonna to start, mm -hmm. let's say at 10, we'll start a, another sprint as well. So oh, good cool. to see you, Brian. I'll be in chat. Awesome seeing everybody. Yeah, yeah. Keep, keep an eye out for that shady Mr. Cleo, though. I'm going to go back and watch replay and see what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dangerous huckster. Yeah. I, I, um, I trust everything I see online. Okay. Oh, well, of course. Case. It's the font of all knowledge. Um, I, I, <laughs> played, uh, I play quite an old puzzle game, Myst, from the I loved 90s. Myst. And I've recently just bought the games because uh, they were on sale on Steam. And so I've been replaying the old games that I haven't played in like 20 years. And Brad Dourif is in the freaking scene capture bits in the third game. And I was looking at it going, are you? That's green or worm tongue. That's, is that Brad Dourif? And then they, it got quite close to his face. I'm oh. like, oh, my God, what are you doing in a missed game? He was, he was nobody mind. back then. Yeah. I mean that's that's yeah, an yeah, old yeah. game. A huge fan of Mist. Yeah, that that is a super old game, and I I I know that because when I first played it, I played it from CD ROM. Me too. Insert disc two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I loved it. I loved it. I was yeah. I was in university, and I was actually studying three D animation at the time. Wow. So, like all of these three D beautifully built three D buildings and puzzles and and stuff, I was just like, "Wow, this is inspirational." It was the very first computer game game I ever played, Which and a friend of ours gave it to us and just it didn't tell me anything. Just went play that, and I was like, um, "Okay." And about six weeks later, he came around and he was like, how are you getting on with this? I was like, oh, it was really good. I don't suppose there's any other of those games. And he went, have you finished it? I'm like, yeah, it was great. It's like, got very, um, very oh. complex puzzles in it. Yeah. Which are very tricky to solve. And it was also back in the day when there was no YouTube where yeah, you, you could go find and watch walkthrough. walkthrough. Wait, 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 was Mist the one where you had to figure out that like um, mm -hmm. uh, fictitious language to solve some of the problems, or was that like yeah. the second part? I think was, there that, was there were the, there were at least the characters or symbols. I don't know yeah. if you had to like learn a complete language exactly, but it was like, you know, a not full on, system. not full on, uh, not like a full on language, but you had to figure out like stuff that was written in like a different alphabet, and you needed to figure out something there. I remember that dimly. Yeah, yep. they had a, they have a a, a, a 
base five numerical system with symbols yeah. rather than alphanumeric numbers. And that was fun to rework out. <laughs> there was another Oh yeah, I remember now. I'll have to I'll have to think about it and text you later, Derry. There is a what's it called? There's a, a puzzle game which reminded me it's nothing like Mist, but it okay. reminded me of Mist because it's you're on an island. Yeah. And it's full of puzzles. And oh. you know, you have to solve a puzzle there to be able to unlock an area to go there. And you know, it just gets progressively yeah. more complex. And the puzzles, yeah, the puzzles are super are four or five super creative. Are all interconnected. Yeah. And, I love and it's it's full of really, really creative stuff, really, really nice puzzles, which some of which were really difficult to solve. Um, yeah. but it was fun. I'll have to I'll have to look back through my uh, my my Xbox history and see if I can find it. Cool. Yeah. Everybody's saying they weren't smart enough for Mist. I think I haven't heard not of knowing anything. Ryan about wasn't it. smart enough for Mist. Never smart enough for Mist. <laughs> I think Daniel. I, I hope it wasn't the, Monkey the, Island, the Jerome, because of, if, if of Matt person. was for that Monkey Island, I would be really mad at him. It was not Monkey Island. <laughs> Jesus, yeah, I, Jerome. I, yeah, I, I, it's I, a I, new game. It's like it came out a couple of years ago. It's not like oh. as old as Monkey Island. No. No, um, I, the, the, the person who gave me the game was like very clever. So for this person to say this is a challenging game I meant I kind of knew what I was going into. So I was fine with being frustrated for a long time until something clicked because I'm like, no, this is hard. This is supposed to be difficult. Just, you know, just thinking crazy. about mist makes it clear how, how little patience I have these days. <laughs> yeah. um, because yeah. now like I'll try, I, I like puzzles and games. I like yeah. when there are puzzles and I'll jump at the puzzle and I'll spend a while trying to figure it out, but I get pretty quickly now, I get to a point where I'm like, fuck this, I'm going to YouTube. Yeah. And, <laughs> I need and a just, just give me the answer because I, I feel like I've been standing in the same spot in the game for way too long. So I think like, that's like uh, one of those things that like how games now. generally have changed those. Like when I look back at like stuff we played in the 90s, so much of this, like, of course, you have like puzzle games, like adventure games where you did those kind of puzzles and spent like days trying staring at the same screen and trying to figure out what to do. And then you had like, you're, you're more like action based games. It was super fucking hard. You went, did like the same level for like died weeks and, 18 and, times. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's something that has mostly vanished from games, which I think is, you know, it's it's a good thing. In that Unless you play FromSoft. FromSoft, yeah. yeah. all of their games are the second category. Like, except Elden Ring. Elden Ring was kind of FromSoft easy mode. But everything before that was try and kill this thing and try and keep your number of deaths under 100. <laughs> Yeah, before you think, beat it, I think that you know? was partly why they had like a very uh, like FromSoft before Elden Ring had like a very specific kind of um, fandom around them because it's a lot of people yeah. that like that very specific challenge where you yeah where you build up player skill you you build up player yeah. skill versus just solving like getting a story told you. you you have to get physically better at like doing the combos and figure stuff out it it, it puts like yeah. more attention on you as the player. Building yes. up skills versus your character building up skills, for example. Yeah, and it. Yeah, I mean, all of those games except Elden Ring, I, I noped out of them. I I played. I think one, the first console I got was PlayStation, and the first game I got with it, or two games, I got Witcher Three, which was awesome, and Bloodborne, which I hated. Um, I didn't I hate the design of that game, though. I didn't hate Bloodborne because it was a bad game. I hated Bloodborne because it's designed for obsessive fourteen-year-olds, right? Yeah. My fingers don't do anymore what you need to do to win Bloodborne. <laughs> you lose right? that flexibility in your knuckles, and and <laughs> also and also in the head. You know, like just the reaction time and the, yeah. and the being being aware of what's going on. And oh my god, those games <laughs> like. All of Christopher all of the Souls incredible. games and the Souls like from games, I uh, just forget it. And then I heard, I saw I saw a video of Elden Ring, and I thought mm -hmm. that is beautiful enough that I have to play it, even if all of the bosses are crazy <laughs> like that. And most of the bosses you can skip. 
Oh, you can cool. go fight them if you want to, but the structure of the game is you can go around a lot of them. So it's I was like, cool. okay, that's all right. Yeah, yeah I, I'm with Chris. That, that old game, there were you didn't get yeah. auto save, and if you forgot to save, you could lose days of playing. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You were like, oh, I'm nearly at the end, and then you'd pick the wrong thing, and all of that progress is gone. Yeah, I, like, think, I think I well, what you said, Matt, is correct. They, they are designed for um, obsessive 14 year old, uh, 14 year olds. The thing yeah. is, we all were obsessive 14 year olds, and that's where a lot of like our formative game memories come from, totally. from us yeah. being obsessive 14 year olds. Yeah. Exactly. That's when you had only, the time to get passionate about stuff. Only when yeah, which, I was 14 years old that like good games didn't exist. Uh, like yeah. is that true? No, nothing like I didn't even have a computer these kinds so. of games. Yeah. My yeah. dad was a computer programmer, so I he gave me a computer for Christmas um when I was nine, I think. So Oh my goodness. Commodore 64 with a tape drive, audio oh my, tape. You were the coolest kid, that man. Saved. Yeah, exactly. I, it was it was rare back then. Not many, yeah, I remember not back in the early two thousands, my flatmate, my back, my flatmate back then went home because they cleaned out like I think his grandfather's place or whatever, and he found his old um, Commodore sixty four and stuff, wow. and, and he brought it like to our flat, and turns out it still worked. So we, we spent like a couple of afternoons trying to play a fucking what's it called a um, space taxi and stuff oh, like that. <laughs> And how frustrating, though, because it, for some reason they just don't want to interact with new televisions. And yeah, Ron, Ron is absolutely correct. the The games we played back then, me and my two best friends, Simon and Dave, we were banned from a particular shop because yeah. we would we would go in and sit there for like four hours playing all of their video games, machines. like yeah. the where you had to put in coins, but we were good enough that we didn't have to put in many coins. And the shop owner realized nobody else could play the games and yeah. we weren't spending any money. So he just yeah. banned us. And like Dan says, my best mate had an Atari. Ah, the old well, console with the, the yep. square the, joysticks. Yeah, I remember the, those. Big cartridges that you dunk in. Yeah, And, and you had to blow it at the right hours. angle to, to make, yeah. And to blow the cartridges. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Atari, exactly, Navo. You're younger than me, but yeah, we, we played the Atari and our game was Defender. And me and my two mates, for some reason, we decided we were going to clock Defender. And if you don't know those old games, you don't know what clocking is. Clocking is when you run the score up so high it goes back to zero. Yeah. Which took us about five hours, but we did it in shifts. Oh, okay. we, we were we were all three so good at it. We were just like, nah, 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 nah. I'd play for an hour, and then I hand it to Simon, and he'd play for an hour and hand it to Dave. And um, yeah. Well, you're such a little baby, Britain. Your first console is a Wii. This so cute. Either either a Wii or a PlayStation Two. Oh, well, to, to oh, be fair, to be fair though, the, the thing is, you can have the same that that same like obsessive fourteen year old playing oh, experience absolutely. on any on any console in any generation. Like I remember, like I was in school a bit younger, and friend had like I think it was like either the first generation Xbox or a PS four, PS three. Don't ask me. And we all like skipped school after like lunch break, and went to uh, to their place because he just got like the new one of the new Mortal Kombat games. And we just like spent the entire day and night um, yeah. to just like completely max out that game and get like every like bonus you could uh, <laughs> buy, uh, buy free and whatnot in like, and we also did that in shifts with like five people. And it's like, yeah, of course that's what we're, what we're going to do. We had to, we had to take turns eating. <laughs> like <laughs> Dave's mom, we were at Dave's house. Dave's mom was, was pretty annoyed with us. <laughs> um because if we're we're just come out of the room just like, well no all three of us are sitting in front of the television only one of us has a joystick we're all staring and going yeah, get, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then she's like dinner's ready you have to stop and no. we looked at each other and we're like two of us will eat now he'll eat later you know it was crazy like at this point, like later later on we had that whole like um you have parties everyone drinks and two people are playing usually Tekken or Mortal Kombat or another fighting game against each other, also being drunk, and 20 people give them advice on what to do. Exactly. <laughs> it's a vibe. It doesn't, doesn't happen, doesn't happen like, anymore. Pitfall. Pitfall was such a cool game. 
Yeah, to Assassin's back in the, Creed. Crazy back in the how day. far we've come. Oh, we've come much further than Assassin's Creed already. Yeah. Um, look at look at Elden Ring and compare it to the first Assassin's Creed. Okay, um, I mean, it's crazy. It's, I, I, I like I'm more narrative kind of driven dead. games. What what can I say? Me too. <laughs> Me too. I mean, now I am a. I love open worlds. I love exploration, and I I need a good story. And if I can explore, and there's a good story, I'm happy. I just feel like, um, like a way too much like like more like strategy games. I, Civilization has robbed me of so many nights in school when you're like, I'll just like one more one more round, and then it's Civ, like five a.m. Civ and Starcraft. It, it's yeah, <laughs> Civ and Starcraft. I played the hell out of Starcraft. Yeah. Oh my god. It's like we me when to... I played like. I'll tell you how young I am. I played like Call of Duty black ops when i was like nine probably shouldn't have been playing it when i was nine but my god it took so many hours of my time <laughs> yeah well, you had them to spend so hey. <laughs> starcraft yeah. and unreal tournament yeah we we used to have nights at my job we used to have i worked in a really big internet agency and there were a bunch of bunch of guys my age and who are all into games and we used to have like a rotating one week on Friday night, we would play StarCraft. Mm -hmm. And one week, the next week, we would play Unreal Tournament. Uh, and we did that for a couple of years. Unreal it was crazy. Tournament. Yeah. Unreal Tournament and Quake 3, depending on which console you had. Yeah. Also, well, we were playing, we were playing, it was LAN. It was an actual LAN party. Land back party. When oh, LAN God, party meant something. <laughs> Do you know what a LAN party is, Britain? I don't, I don't, it doesn't sound familiar to me. LAN it's, means it's a moment in local, time. local area network. So oh, it's basically yeah. when you have computers that are in the same room or at least the it's same the building and they're connected through cables to the same network. Yeah. Um, and this was back in the day when the internet wasn't fast enough to play games over it. So yeah. you would do LAN parties. And you get, well, like we were doing a LAN party, not the way other people did. Like Thornall says, it's when your computer becomes baggage. There were people who yeah. would carry their computers carry the computer. to a yeah. friend's house to set up a LAN party. We were in, in an agency. We all worked together. So our computers we worked on we were networked. And we would just be like, okay, we're, we're done for the day. Work is over. Get out the beers and let's start playing. Yeah. <laughs> Dan remembers the secret shortcuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you no yeah, longer like, like, had to write them down because you knew them. Yeah. 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 It goes over into muscle memory. Yeah. Um, Did you play like World of Warcraft, um, Raph? I, I remember you mentioning something. No, like I did not no. play. I did not play World that was of me. Warcraft. That was I did me. play Warcraft yeah, Three. Was Warcraft Three was in fact the last video game I could still play. And I went through the human campaign, and then I was halfway through the um, undead campaign when I, um, when my site just gave up enough for me to no longer be able to actually play that, like, me, you know, meaningfully. Yeah. So don't tell me how it ends. <laughs> <laughs> <My story. laughs> World, of, World of Warcraft was was me. I played enough World of Warcraft to nearly lose my job and girlfriend. Um, Oops. And I, I realized in time, and then I was oh, like. Wait. That's good. I have a problem. I need to go cold turkey, and I have not touched World of Warcraft since then. Well done. Yeah. I'm a bit of a sucker for, like, crafting and progression and all that kind of stuff. That's how they get you. Yes. So shall we do a splint? Good plan. Sure. Yeah. Until... Are you going to be listening to your book about capitalism, Raph? I am continuing that book. It's a very good book, Britain. I highly recommend it. It's um, it gives you an introduction to Marxist terminology, and uses very you know, still very relevant contemporary examples to explain what kind of structural issues are maybe hidden in there. I know you mean it well, Raph, but every time you explain a, a, a book you're reading, <laughs> it, it doesn't make me want to read it. <laughs> Quite the opposite. Yeah, like I, I understand. I mean, it sounds interesting if you're interested in those things. It, yeah, it, that's that, that's supposed like know. if if you want to learn about like um what Marxist theory is doing these days and how it applies to like actual 
contemporary um, practical issues, then it's a very good book. If you're just not interested in like uh, economics or anything of the sort, then yeah, <laughs> it's a lot yeah. of like terminology. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds boring as fuck to me, but that's me. I mean, I'm probably not going to um, agree with it, um, Raph, but I'll, I'll definitely read it. See, uh, I, I don't think it's about about. agreeing or not. It's not necessarily a, uh, it's not that kind of book. I think that's like one of those things that often kind of gets lost when we when you use the word Marx. It's very much descriptive. It's not prescriptive. It's more like, so we, we see what went wrong and then we need to figure out, is that something because one person fucked up or is it something that is sort of inherent in the way we set up the system? It's a very analytical one. It's not a prescriptive one that tells you that we need to go out and, I don't know, uh, <clears throat> hang some bankers or whatever. It's not that kind of book. So it's not about... Not so much about agreeing or disagreeing, I think. If you're going to hang people, start with the lawyers. Get yeah, the bankers they after. deserve it. Yeah. I'm so reading. let's read until oh, 22. I was just saying, I'm reading, um, I'm reading only Killers and Thieves. Okay. Um, if anyone likes the proposition, the, the Western film that um, has like Guy Pierce and Danny Houston, yep. I recommend this. It's an okay. Aussie Western but All right. Anyway. I actually want to read the true good. history of the Kelly gang. I've, I've read it, but I want to read it again because Ned Kelly was a legendary, legendary, outlaw. legendary outlaw in Australia who built himself iron <laughs> armor. <laughs> he built himself a suit of iron armor and, um, and yeah, survived. was it? Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. When, when Americans talk about Billy the Kid and all that, I'm like, nah. Got nothing, nothing on Ned. On Ned Kelly. No. <laughs> uh, he he, get, he gets referenced in uh, obviously in the Discworld book set in um, Australia as yeah. Tinhead Ned. <laughs> yes. He yeah. Does. Pretty pretty original. I've I've seen his armor, the actual suit yeah. of armor he he wore in a museum. It's very anyway. Cool. Yeah. 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 Super cool. Okay. Everybody, please mute yourself and enjoy your reading.
Hello. <laughs> Hello. Mm, got that nice crispy voice there, Matt. <laughs> yeah, I think in the first or maybe second pub I ever did, somebody said that I completely shocked them when we came back from a sprint because I said hi or something. Yeah. So, so what, I try and keep it very mellow. What, so what, what book are you reading, man? I am reading Sun Eater? Disquiet Gods, the sixth Sun Eater book. Damn, what kind of microphone are you using, though, Matt? That's something I was uh, wondering. What microphone? Yeah. Because... Uh, a Yeti. Ah, okay. Yeah, Blue Yeti. Well, we often underestimate how much, like, actually having a dedicated, like, desk microphone or whatever does actually help with, like, the voice thing. Yeah, I... Unfortunately, when I started my channel, I knew too much about video production. Yeah. <laughs> so I couldn't be happy with shitty gear. Mm -hmm. um, and I bought myself a shotgun microphone for, for a video recording. So I use it oh. like a boom. I have it on a, on a stand and it's nice. above me. So it's not in the picture. And mm -hmm. it picks up everything, but in a very, very narrow space. Cold. Yeah. So the the biggest problem I had when I started recording was the the my flat has three and a half meter high ceilings. Oh, you got like a lot and, of echo there. <laughs> and I have wooden floors. So <laughs> yeah, everything echoes. But the boom mic, the, the shotgun mic, it's very targeted. And if I point it straight at my face, it works. It doesn't pick up oh, as good. much of the whole room as every other kind of. Uh, so your next plan is to invest heavily in like wall hangings, wall curtains. No, and, and, no. <laughs> I, I, I looked thing. around and I was like, there, there is no way I could make this huge room any better yeah. soundproofed. So yeah. I'm just the the mic is as good as it gets. So. Yeah. I've I've known people to record like voiceover or podcast stuff like either in like a wardrobe like because you have like yeah. zero echo there if you have the clothes in there oh, yeah. or record or record in their car which was parked in the garage because that also like has like yeah, zero sound. echo. Yeah. I know I know a guy who um does voiceovers in Australia mm -hmm. and he actually he has a very small flat and mm -hmm. he has a folding sound booth which is basically oh, okay. three That's pieces clever. of wood. It's like three pieces of wood with, with eggshell, you know, egg cut yeah. and foam on the foam. inside. Oh, yeah. And they, it, there's one in front of him, one on either side, and they fold back around oh, the okay. middle one so that he can basically put it away flat. And then he hangs a heavy cloth over Perfect. himself behind. Yeah. And yeah. the mic sits in, in there and it's like, completely sound yeah. neutral there's yeah. no echoes yeah darko <laughs> hello good to see you yes this is kind of it kind of looks like the cat from stort little you know the the one that like snowball snowball yeah thank you yeah no, it's dr is evil's cat isn't it um it would work yeah if Roxy was easier to handle in that if he doesn't want to be covered, there's no way I'll get them. I would totally open my videos with more uh, 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 because you're such exactly. an evil overlord cat. Sure. Yes, totally. And and he looks like constantly pissed off. <laughs> he is constantly pissed off. He's old <laughs> okay. and um, so he's a rescue perfect. and he's got sore hips and he has really squished up face so his eyes are always sore. And he yeah. just struggles eating and he's got no teeth. So yes, oh, he's yeah. grumpy. Yeah. No wonder. I'm, I'm I'm as I'm getting older, I am I am investing heavily in the concept of the older you get, the grumpier you're actually allowed to be and nobody can say oh, shit yeah. about it. <laughs> it, it. Old people yeah. are like, really? Fight me. Yeah. Convince me I need to be in a better mood. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> The the older you get, the less you care what anybody else thinks. You run out of yeah. fucks to give. Exactly. Okay. My my fucks account has been empty for a long time. So yeah. My best friend cares a great deal about a great many things and it stresses her out. And for years I've wanted to make her, and I eventually will, a, a, a fucks to give jar 
where she only has three. <laughs> we're going to make her three little stones with the word fuck on it for this bowl. So that's as many fucks as you are allowed to give today. Yeah. Good yeah. idea. Good idea. I, I, I totally nice understand reminder. that. I, I wish I could, like, I, that's part of, like, my private life where I'm pretty good at, like, not giving a fuck about anything. Yeah. But in the grand scheme of things, I am just, like, wired in the way that I'm constantly angry about something in the world. Yeah. Something that I can't change. Yeah. That only means yeah. you're human, Raph. It's hard, though, to maintain that level, um, Britain. It's really hard. Sometimes you've got to learn it's, to let it go. It's <laughs> not go, healthy. <clears throat> no, I, it's not healthy. It's, it's not at all healthy. It's not good for me to give a shit about that. I mean, especially especially things that you can't do anything about. Like, mm -hmm. caring about important things that you can influence yeah. totally makes sense. It's a far better use of your energy. But, but <sighs> investing any kind of energy, whether it's anger or not, <laughs> in um stuff you can't do anything about yeah you may as well just go bang your head on a wall until your skull cracks i mean like yeah no, no, I, I totally learn understand. from the cats give no fuck yeah <laughs> but, <laughs> they're, but they're much happier thing, for like, it there's so many things that like are really hard to ignore like i, yeah. I have family living in israel I Ooh. can't do anything about things happening there, but it's also very difficult to not care at that oh, yes. point but not caring is not the same as not giving a fuck <laughs> Yeah, true. Hi, Chadia. Yes, hi, Chadia. You're arriving hey. very late Chadia. because it's almost 11 here in Germany where Raf and I are, and I was actually just about to call it. Just and as well, I brought Mots in for well, I mean, it's also almost 11 um, in Belgium where Chadia is. Exactly. So what are you and doing here? it's almost nine so here. Late, I should start my day. Exactly. <laughs> Dairy I have needs to go, go on my um, asshole and... wandering. Exactly. <laughs> I think it's better if you say wandering like an asshole, not asshole wandering. True. Very yeah. true. Yeah. I go wander like an asshole. Yeah, it's like, I, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to finish that chapter because it's a long chapter. It's, I'm almost done with my book, but this one on like <clears throat> uh, endless compound growth and why it doesn't work. Alas, Sounds it is only almost four here in Oklahoma. It's. <laughs> It's always a different time there. I to, it's always yeah, four o'clock somewhere, I guess. I can have a beer now. Exactly. I had to wake up at nine this morning. Oh, oh my God. I know. Life is so rough. To be fair, I would have done the same, except for this one. Hey. Oh, and to, yeah. to be fair, like I had to wake up around miss? nine as well. But since we had um, we had friends over, so I was, I was traveling. And while I was traveling, my flatmate decided to invite... Um, Two friends like we have in common, like they're also my friends. One from Switzerland and uh, one from uh, <clears throat> that city that should get bombed more often. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm talking Dresden. Okay. Um, <laughs> and, no, no. Um, and and, uh, <laughs> and uh, my flatmate's also from Dresden. Like I have a lot of friends there. Anyway, so they came over, and um, so like I had like one and a half days of recovery after like my week in the Balkans, and then I had two friends staying in a very small apartment um and uh then last night um we went down into town and then he decided to uh stay the night with his girlfriend and so i had to suddenly be host of friends that i didn't invite <laughs> i i have a, a furry alarm clock that wakes me at seven every day so like yeah, the sleeping until nine. Work, like, I don't. I'm well, the not snooze a morning button, person, Matt. The snooze. I, I'm not I either. Grumpy. I do too, hmm. but I have to feed a cat. Um, I like my snooze button is basically my foot kicking fits <laughs> off the bed. Yeah, and, and she's it's, too little to let that go for long. Uh, sorry, too big. She's not little to let yeah, that go. Yeah, she's not little at all, and it's uh, it's like. It's going to be 30 seconds to two minutes before she's back on the bed. So it's like very, very brief snoozes. Um, mm. the, and then the, every the, now and then there's like, I, I don't understand her. One time, last week, I think, she mm. did the usual, seven o'clock, scratching on me. And I kicked her off the bed twice. And then yeah. I woke up at 10. Like. She just are, let you have a lay in that day. Feeling remarkably <laughs> generous today, Fitz. What's what's up? With Am you? I going to pay for this tomorrow? Yeah, <laughs> totally, totally bizarre. Anyway, it's getting late here. Yeah, 
Uh, it's been a pleasure as always. Next week, there isn't anything particular going on, so there will be. A I pub. might be not uh, not there next week because I'm at I'm at because my life doesn't actually have like anything except stress. I'll be um, at a festival until <coughs> Sunday, and I'll either be back home from the festival to help friends organize a concert here. Or I'll be in a different city um, for my mother's birthday and take over for my sister in case she can't actually fly over um, because of, you know, <laughs> living in a country that might be in a shooting war with Iran by then. <laughs> oh, dear. I hope it all goes well. Yeah, I hope it's real. Keep my fingers crossed for you. I hope <laughs> that your Israeli family, I have a number of very good friends in Israel as well. Yeah. So I've also been paying attention. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Uh, it's it's basically the most problematic part of the planet since Ever. the dawn of time, more or less. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, like calming down is relative, but I yeah, do yeah. hope things calm down. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see a bit. I, I guess I guess we'll know after Tuesday with you know uh, Pesach being on on Tuesday. I guess if, yeah. if something happens, it'll happen around that time. Yeah, yeah. likely. Anyway, I wish you all a lovely evening, afternoon, day, depending yeah. on where you are. I wish I'll you all a some lovely theory. Exactly. And uh, see you all next week. It's always fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.